Computer security has always struggled with the age-old problem of identity authentication. Fingerprints, iris scans, and passwords have proven less than accurate or cost-effective, forcing businesses and network operators to look for a new way of knowing whether you are you. Pluralock Security, a Canadian-based global leader in advanced frictionless authentication, uses a novel approach known as behavioral biometrics to tackle the current challenges left by traditional modes of authentication. Hello, I'm Galen Engen on behalf of Equity.Guru, and I'm speaking with Ian Patterson, CEO of Pluralock, to get a better idea of behavioral biometrics and the company's investment potential as it hits the public market boards for the first time tomorrow. I'm really glad you're here today, Ian. Thanks for showing up. I'm, it's wonderful. Uh, first question, it's easy to understand fingerprints, facial recognition and iris scanning, but just what do you mean by behavioral biometrics? And what are the advantages it has over traditional modes of authentication? Absolutely, and thanks, Galen. I appreciate being here. So behavioral biometrics is the study of how people act over time. So similarly to a fingerprint, um, there's something unique about you as a person in the behavior that you exhibit. Now, Pluralock's secret sauce is we're able to first analyze what is unique about you as an individual when you are interacting with your computer. The way that we do that is we look at how you type on the, on the keyboard, how you move a mouse. We're not really focused on what you're typing. We're more interested in things like the speed, the rhythm, the cadence of how you're doing that interaction. Now, as a result of artificial intelligence and machine learning, we're able to build a profile of what's normal and expected for you as an individual. And then we use that profile to authenticate. Crucially, we can do this authentication both when you're first logging into a system. So this would be a, a way of, of getting rid of or, or reducing passwords, but also after you've logged in, making sure you're still the right person continuously throughout the day. And crucially, without incur encumbering uh, any user friction. Gotcha. Now, can you give us just sort of a brief history on how Pluralock came to be? Absolutely. So Pluralock as a company, we actually started at the University of Victoria and our co-founder, chief scientist and his team of uh, first PhD uh, candidates and then postdocs we're doing research in this area of behavioral biometrics. Um, now we're, we're beneficiaries of that fundamental research and crucially because it was done in an academic setting, we're, um, we're very fortunate that we have hundreds of journal articles, thousands of journal citations and peer reviewed academic journals that all tie back to this technology. So it's had a, a long period to mature and get peer reviewed by other experts around the world. Uh, around 2016, uh, our, our past chairman, Barry Carlson, uh, a small group of investors got together. They spun the technology out of the university and really started to build a business around the core intellectual property. Um, we're very excited that uh, as of tomorrow, we'll, we will be up and trading on the, the TSX venture. And this is really just um, the next step in Pluralock's evolution to help safeguard the people and data um, out there using behavior. Now, your two offerings are Adapt and Defend. Can you give me a brief description of what each is and what it does? So think of when you're connecting into, let's say, your email, or when you first go to log into your, uh, if you're a business user, you might connect through a, a VPN to your corporate network. A lot of the times, as, a, as an end user, you're asked to do things like um, get a text message to your phone or you may have actually been issued a little uh, token with a six digit rotating number. Frequently bank users will have these, uh, particularly for business accounts. These are all forms of multi-factor authentication. And what multi-factor authentication means is that you're looking at multiple factors to verify the identity of an individual. Now the three factors you can use are something that you know, which would be like a password or a pin number, something that you have, and that could be your cell phone, that could be a token, that could also be a USB drive that you insert into your computer, and then something that you are. And that could be a, a biometric, like a fingerprint, like an iris scan, or in our case, the way that you interact with your device through keyboard and, and through mouse. Clearlock Adapt is a form of MFA, multi-factor authentication, 
And this is really important because there are many industries like financial services, payments, healthcare, that actually require some form of MFA. It's not optional, you actually must have it if you want to comply with the regulations. And so for us, this means that there's a very large market to be able to go after. Um, and our value proposition is that it's an easier form to use. In a lot of cases, what we find is that our customers are frequently caught between a rock and a hard place where their users are saying, look, the IT system is already too complex, too complicated to work with. But on the other hand, you absolutely must comply with industry regulations if you want to stay in business. And so what are you supposed to do? What we found is that a lot of our customers are actually turning to us as an easier form of complying with these regulations without sacrificing uh, you know, any, any, any security. So that's our PlayerLock Adapt product. Now, PlayerLock Defend is similarly using behavior to authenticate users. We do this actually at the workstation level. Now, the reason this is important in today's environment is that this time a year ago, you'd have maybe 10% of the workforce who was connecting in from home, maybe from a Starbucks somewhere, from somewhere that's not in the office. And the other 90% were secure in, in the corporate building. Uh, you know, you may have had uh, swipe cards to get into the building, actual physical keys to open up offices. And so you had additional safeguards to make sure that you are in fact the right person. Now with COVID, that ratio has flipped. Now you maybe have 10% of your workforce who's actually coming into the office and the other 90% are working from home. And the question then becomes, how do you know who's on the other end of that remote connection? How do you know that it's actually Ian who's on the other end of this computer right now at home and not Ian's spouse? Even if we trust Ian's spouse, you know, they're, they're in the same family, the problem becomes data privacy. If, you have, if you're a business and you have customers, you have a responsibility to safeguard your customers' data. You actually don't want anybody other than the authorized individuals to look at or have access to anybody's personally inf uh, identifiable information. Now, think about the, the COVID situation with healthcare data, this is even more important. We have suddenly patient privacy at risk. And so what Defend does is it's able to continuously authenticate, make sure you're the right person throughout the day. And, you know, in this new normal, that's becoming more and more important. Absolutely. Now, let's just pretend I'm a business operator. I want to get involved with PureLock. I only have a couple of users I need to authenticate. But all and behold, I'm, I'm, I'm growing. I've got, I've got businesses now in different cities. How easy is it to translate your offerings across different workstations and different network environments? So PlayerLock is very easy to use. And in fact, one of the things that we're finding is that businesses who are maybe on the smaller side, but are growing tend to need our services and products even more than the larger, more established businesses. The reason for that is if you're in a larger organization, you have some economies of scale. Maybe you've got a dedicated security person on your IT team and they're looking after security. They've already made some investments. Um, but for the emerging business, um, particularly as we see businesses who are um, migrating more to the cloud, they're using more cloud products, um, it becomes even more important. The, the best thing to do and, and the first recommendation that I always have is turn on multi-factor authentication. Whether you use PlayerLock, whether you use something else, that's actually the best thing that you can do as a business owner is to enforce your employees. Look, if you're connected into your corporate email account on Google or on uh, Microsoft 365, make sure that there's additional checks to validate that they are in fact the right person. Now, if you do get pushback and your employees say, look, it's too frustrating to open up an app on my phone or get a text message, or maybe, um, you know, maybe their workstation um, is in a place where they don't have great cell reception and so they can get online with their laptop, but they don't always get their text messages, um, then absolutely go to plurlock.com and, and reach out to one of our, our reps and we're happy to help make that uh, make that process easier for you. Perfect. Now, with your in intimate listing uh, that's coming up on the trans or the TSX Venture Exchange under the ticker uh, PLUR, uh, what can investors expect over the next six to twelve months is going to happen with PureLock? What do you guys got in the works? Yeah, the whole intention of us pursuing a, a public listing was twofold. One, we have a very solid product, and we're looking to get this in as many hands as possible. And so we, we raised a round of, of financing as part of the RTO process, and we're, um, we're investing that into sales and marketing. 
So things to expect, I, I would expect us to announce new partnerships. I would expect us to announce new customer wins. I would also expect us to announce new product launches, particularly as we make it even easier if you have a specific flavor of, of email server and you wanna use our system with, with that. Um, our, our product development team is working on being able to make that as, as easy and as seamless as possible. Um, and then the last thing is that cybersecurity as an industry is quite fragmented. Uh, and so part of the, the value I think that we can bring is to help organize um, some of those disparate solutions. Uh, so I would certainly expect um, some news on the M&A front uh, coming from us in the next 12 months. So Ian, uh, in regards to let's say current customers and stuff, who's using your product? What, who's doing it? Yeah, it's a good question. You know, one of the challenges uh, that a lot of cybersecurity companies face is that usually by the time somebody needs our products, it's too late. And so they don't want to be associated with procuring cybersecurity solutions because that might mean that, uh, you know, they've been breached recently. Um, but what I can say, and, and a lot of this you'll actually find on our, on our news section on our website, um, is that we've had multiple contracts from the U.S. federal government, both on the civilian side with U.S. Department of Homeland Security, as well as the U.S. Army on the Canadian side as well. Um, and then in terms of our commercial practice, we're really we're laser focused on financial services um, as well as healthcare. And on the financial services side, uh, you know, our customers represent over $100 billion of assets under management. And so we're, we've really got a good foothold there. And I think what you're going to see over the next 12 to 24 months um, is an increase in, in those industries. Um, you're going to see more wins from us when it comes to financial services. I also think particularly because of this COVID shift, um, healthcare organizations are, are spending a lot more money on cybersecurity now than they ever have before. Um, and they're also under attack now than, than they ever have before. And so I, I certainly expect, we've got a number of projects on the go um, in those areas, and I would certainly expect uh, some more news um, coming from, from those verticals in particular. I am truly appreciative of what you have to offer. It's a complex subject that you guys are able to break it down in very easy to understand terms. And as you said, also easy to implement. It's this sounds like a really great solution. Um, I know I'll be keeping my eye on you. <laughs> uh, I really want to thank you for showing up today, Ian. This has been incredibly informative, and I can't wait to do a follow-up. Thanks, Galen. I appreciate it. Anytime.